QuickBooks Online 2023, Adjusting Entry and Reversing Entry Journal Reports. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30-day free trial. We also have open the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest incognito. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it or you can use another browser. You can open incognito window if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser, incognito window typing into the search engine, QuickBooks Online test drive. We're using the sample company to compare the accounting view, the one Get Great Guitars is in, and the business view, the one the sample company is in. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below. We're now going to be duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. We're going to right click on the tab up top to duplicate it. And that duplicated tab that's thinking right now, we're going to right click on it to duplicate it again. We're going to go back to the tab that we duplicated in the first place, which is in the middle currently, and down to the reports on the left hand side. Open up the balance sheet report. Let's take a look at where those reports are located in the business view, by the way, which are in the business overview. Then the reports on the left hand side, bringing it back to the Get Great Guitars tab to the right. Open up the reports on the left. We want to take a look at the profit and loss and then close up the boogie. And then we'll change the range up top. Let's bring it all the way from 0101. Uh, two, three to let's go to O three thirty one two three. The cutoff date is two twenty eight, but we're gonna go to O three thirty one to see the activity for the reversing entries. Let's look at that month by month transactions. Run it back to the balance sheet. Then changing the range. We got closing of the hand buggy. Change the range. We're going from 010123 to 033123. We're going to look at it on a month by month breakout as well. And then we will run that one too. So we've been entering two months of data input. We're imagining we're processing the financial statements for external reporting as of the cutoff date 228. So we entered the adjusting entries as of 228. And then for those that needed a reversing entry, we went into the reversing entry as of March. So now you can think about, you know, producing your financial statements at the end of this time frame. Obviously, if you're preparing external reports, then you might go through the similar process as we have seen in the past, saving your reports that you might be grouping for external reporting purposes, or if you're a bookkeeper possibly providing those to a client, as we saw, we could go to the tab to the left. We can go to the reports on the left hand side. And in prior sections, we went to our customized reports and we started to, to customize our reports for uh, external reporting, possibly grouping them under the categories of months, for example. And we looked at possibly having a summary balance sheet a balance sheet standard, an income statement summary, an income statement, comparative balance sheets, and comparative income statements, and so on and so forth, which you can set up and possibly number so that you can provide them to a client or external reporting. Once you generate these reports, then you could email them one at a time. You could print them. You could then export them to a PDF file and then possibly put them into a zipped file and then provide them on a cloud drive maybe, or you could you could uh, email a zipped file, or you can use Excel and possibly Word in, in alignment or just Excel to, to put them all on one PDF file using a PDF printer, such as the cute PDF printer. Or if I go back to the tab to the left, you can use your management report tools, 
which gives you this nice uh, little format to put everything on one PDF file. It's a little bit more limited than exporting to Excel, but that's a great tool as well. So for now, we just wanna kind of review where we stand at this point in time. This is our balance sheet. This is our income statement. We're also gonna open up a trial balance to check our numbers, and then we'll take a look at the journal reports as well. Noting that the journal reports, especially if you work in like an account, a, a CPA firm, or a tax preparation uh, firm or something like that. And you have a difference between when you're entering the adjusting entries and when the bookkeeping or accounting department is doing their side of things, we have to communicate what, what was done with the adjusting entries, which means we want to generate reports which are showing just the adjusting and reversing entries so we can explain what has been done uh, to, to the other department, uh, the accounting department. So let's open up a trial balance. I'm gonna right click duplicate and open up a trial balance as well so let's go down to the reports on the left hand side and i'm gonna open up a trial balance so let's let's go into the standard reports type in trial balance so this is where we stand in terms of just the trial balance which i think is the easiest to report to check our numbers so we went go from go from 01 uh, 3123 to 033123. And then I'm going to see it on a month by month, side by side. So there's our trial balance. So you could check your numbers as of the cutoff date and also your numbers after the reversing entries in March and see if we're in the same place. Now, note that if your numbers matched our numbers before entering the adjusting journal entries as of the date 228, then the difference between where we stood before and where we stand now should be reflected in the journal reports that we will create as of 228 for the adjusting entries that we have entered. And then, of course, the difference between where we stood before and where we stand now in the month after March, month after the cutoff date, will also reflect the reversing entries, which we will also run a report for. Let's start out with a report showing all the transactions since January 31st. So we're gonna run a transaction detail report, which will show us the difference between where we stood in basically January, the January trial balance, and then to, to February. So let's do that first. I'm gonna to go to the tab to the right, right click and duplicate the tab. We're gonna go down to the reports on the left-hand side. So we'll say the reports, and I'm just gonna type in to find it, the transaction, transaction, detail report not by account but by date transaction detail by date this one transaction list by date okay let's go into that and i'm going to run it for 02 02 01 23 to 02 28 23 so this is going to be all the stuff that takes us from the balance uh, as of the end of january to the end of uh, February, and it's going to include the journals that we put in place as well. Now, this is going to be the one that gives us the date, the transaction type uh, ordered by date rather than by account. And it gives us the name, the memo, the account, which is the primary account, and then the split account, the other accounts impacted. But if there's more than two accounts impacted, it gives us that split. So this is this is what the detail is there. Now, if I wanted to sort this down and just look at the journal type of transactions, I could take this report and then and then filter it down to just the journals. Here's all the entries that we made on 228 with our adjusting entries. I could go up top and say, if I wanna zero down on those, I could go to customize and say, I want to filter by transaction type. And let's just see the, the journal entry type of type of transactions. So now I've got just the journal transactions. And then again, I could further limit it down. If I just want to limit, limit it by date, I can limit it down to just those that happen on 022823. And so now we could see basically the, the journal transactions. Now, of course, the other side isn't definite over here because we uh, have the splits. I could do this a similar thing with the journal reports. So let's go to the journal reports and do this. Tab to the right, right click and duplicate. And 
I'm going to go to the reports on the left hand side and then close up the ham boogie. I'm going to type in journal, journal report. So we've been looking at these as we do the data input and let's run it for the full month again from 020123 to 022823 and then run it. So now we've got all the all the transactions showing the journal entry, not just for the journal forms, but for all of, of the forms, which again is a, a great tool to see all the detail that is happening for all the transactions taking us from the end of January to the end of February. And of course, at the bottom of this again, we should see all of our, our actual journal type form reports. So if I scroll all the way down, Here's our journal entries for the adjusting entries. So then now I can I can filter down on those. I can go, okay, let's filter down on customize, filter, and just look at the transaction type, a journal type of report and run that. So now we've got just the journals. Now I'm gonna further limit it by date because I entered all my, my journal entries as of 228. So I'm gonna say this is 022823 to 0228. So now I have a report that's pretty specific. It's not completely specific because I still have these other two that aren't actual adjusting entries. So you can narrow it down pretty well by running these because remember that most of the data entry transactions are not in the form of journal entries, although journal entries are created in terms of the debits and credits that are happening, but they're entered with all these other forms. So when I'm trying to run just my period end activity, I can use this journal report and I can I can trim it down by by uh, date, by transaction type. And then I can also see that these are the adjustments because it says adjusting entry here. So then I might further want to customize this possibly by by exporting it to Excel so I can delete maybe this these top two and provide them to a client because it's useful if there's a difference between who's doing the adjusting entries and who's doing the bookkeeping, if the bookkeeping has a question and they're saying, hey, so you did something funny over there, you can at least look and say, hey, look, these are the journal entries that we made. And you can you could print them out and, and show uh, a client what you did in terms of the of the adjusting entries or so each each side can be aware of them. So to further drill this down so I don't confuse these other two transactions, I might export it to Excel, hit the drop down. I'm going to export to Excel All right, and let's drag that in to my, to my item over here. And so I'm going to then rename it. I'm going to right click and rename it. And I'm going to call this adjusting entries, something like that. And then I can open it up and say that I don't want these top two up there, right? So I can go tab to the right, tab to the left. It's gonna be a long report. So I need to clean it up a little bit. So I could say, all right, I'm, this is pretty much gonna to have to be landscape, I think. So I'm gonna to go to the, this page layout. I'm gonna orientate it to landscape. So that doesn't help me out too much. Notice that this, this total column, I, I don't really need this whole row just so I can put a total down there. But if I delete it, this is where this, this top thing, I don't like that it uses these, uh, if I want this header, I can't delete column A because they've used this going to, to the tab to the left, this merge. So I'm going to unmerge this whole thing. Unmerge, unmerge, and then unmerge. I'm going to copy this whole thing or I can right click and cut it and then paste it. So now I can delete column A, which I don't need. And the number doesn't look like I have any names here. The names column is completely not used. So I'm just gonna put my cursor on column D and delete it. I probably don't need the transaction type anymore because these are all a journal forms, but maybe I wanna keep that. And then I might make the memo a little bit shorter. Then I might wrap the text. Notice that the text is wrapped here. It's already wrapped. So if I go up top, they've wrapped the text. So that is that. I might do the same on these here. I might wrap the text so I can make the description a little bit shorter so I can have long descriptions that won't make it too long to, uh, to the report, make it so it fits on one page. And then I like to select all of the text and show it 
on top. So I'm gonna go boom, show it that way. So the text is on top. And then I might just go to all of these and just double click on them just to make sure they're as wide as they need to be. So there's, there you have it. So now it fits on one page and I can get, and if I wanna expand this again, I could take this out to the end of the page, which is right here. And then instead of merging it back this way, by merging it, I tend to like to use this other tool which you can right click and say format, format cells, and then align, align it this way, center across. So that way it doesn't actually merge the cells, but it still kind of puts it in the middle. And then I can do the same thing here. I can select these, right click and format, and then drop down and center across and then select these right click and then format and center across okay so there is that and now i can now i can present this i can export it to a pdf if i need to from here after i've kind of cleaned it up so i can give it to someone that where it looks kind of nice and i can do other things to it like i could take my header and i can make it black and white as we've been doing in the past and i might put my grid lines down here if I want to. I can put the grid lines in if that's would be something useful. These all have another underline under them. So I might just take, not that one. I might take like all of this stuff and put an underline under these because they're total totals. And so I might put an underline that way or something. And then I might put like a double underline over here, whatever you wanna do on the formatting. And then I'm also gonna scroll up and delete these top two because these are not adjusting journal entries. So that's part of the point that we exported this here. So I'm gonna go from column or row six and drag down to 13 and then right click and delete, right click and delete. So now we've just got our adjusting journal entries. Does that throw off the total here? The total is hard coded down here. So I don't think that total is relevant. So I'm gonna remove the total too. I'm gonna to put my cursor on 36 and 37, right click and uh, delete. So there we have the information. So I think that looks pretty good. If we just recap what we did, we did an adjusting entry for the interest to record uh, the accrued interest, which we had incurred, but had not yet paid. We entered an adjusting entry for an invoice that was entered after the cutoff date that we needed to pull back in uh, before the cutoff date. This one, uh, both of these are gonna have a reversing entry that we'll see related to them. And then this one down here was the prepaid insurance account. So we put everything, uh, when we entered the insurance, we put it into a prepaid insurance and then we recorded the amount of the insurance which uh, is an expense the portion of the insurance that is an expense as it has been consumed this is a permanent difference so we're not going to have a reversing entry here we did a rec recording of depreciation according to the amortization schedule another permanent difference same with this one it's a permanent difference we're not going to reverse it and then we have the uh the accounts receivable transaction for the deposit an unearned revenue kind of situation but slightly different than what you might normally see in a book problem this is one that we're going to reverse which we will see shortly and then we had the breakout between short-term and long-term pur purposes of the loan which is also one that we're going to be reversing so let's save this and let's just make our reversing entry transactions now so I'm going to go back on over and I'm just going to up this to one day to the to three one. Now these are the reversing entries. You'll note that not all the adjusting entries have a reversing entry because we need to determine which are going to be temporary and which are permanent. So these are we don't have any other issues with other journal reports here, but let's go ahead and export this to Excel too. So I'm going to hit the drop down, export it to Excel. And then I'm going to open it, open it up this time. And I'm going to copy the data and put it into my other worksheet. So I have the two uh, tabs on one sheet. I'm going to enable the editing, put my cursor in the triangle, right click and copy. 
And then I'm going to go back on over to my other Excel sheet, add another tab, double click. These are going to be reversing. And if I double click on this one, these are the adjusting entries versus the reversing. I got to put my cursor in A1 or select the entire sheet with a triangle to paste it. And there we have it. I'll just do the formatting fairly quick. I'm going to hold control, scroll up a bit. And then if I go to the tab or the view to the right, back to the left, it doesn't fit on a page. I'm going to go landscape, page layout, landscape. I'm going to get rid of column A again. I've got to un, uh, have it so it doesn't expand, unmerge, and then unmerge. I got to do them one at a time, unmerge those three. I'm going to take these and pull them into column B so I can put my cursor on column A, right click and delete it. So we have that. And that looks pretty good. I don't need the name column again. So I'll put my cursor on column D, right click and delete it. And then that looks good. I can I can make this column a little bit smaller possibly. I could wrap the text if I needed to, wrapping the text. And then I like to make all the text uh, go on the top to the bottom. So I'm going to say alignment, put it on the top. Uh, and so there is that. I'm going to make... I'm going to hold control, scroll up a bit. And then let's make this, I can make this a little bit wider until it fits on one page exactly. So we can do that. And then maybe these underlines, instead of having it this way, I'm just going to format it the same that I did before. I want to have them be these kind of underlines. Maybe I don't need the total down here. Going to select these three and delete that and then maybe I select the whole thing and put grid lines around it possibly and then maybe I'm going to expand this to the middle again by right clicking format the cells I'm going to go into the alignment and center across the selection this one too I'm going to right click format the cells and center across the selection Hold on. K Paso. I missed the button. You have to hit the OK button if you want to complete the process. One more time. We're going to select this item center across the selection and then maybe select these and make them, you know, black and white it has been our custom. So there we have that. So then we have the reversing entry for the interest. So I reversed this to, so that we can make. Here's the adjusting entry. Here's the reversing entry so that we can uh, allow the accounting department to follow the amortization schedule. This had an adjusting entry for, for that invoice that was, was entered in the following month, but for which the work was done in the current month, we have to reverse it so that we can get the financial statements correct as of the cutoff date and then reverse it the period after so it's not in there twice as of the date the actual invoice was entered. Notice on this one in particular, it's easiest to just keep the same accounts from top to bottom and just change the debits and credits, even though it looks kind of odd in terms of debits not being on top. I think that's the easiest way to do it though. And then going down to the next one, we had prepaid insurance. This is a permanent difference. No adjust, no reversing entry. We've got the depreciation, permanent differences, no adjusting entry. We've got the issue with that deposit, which had a negative, which had a negative uh, accounts receivable, which we, which we saw works quite well from the bookkeeping side of things, but is not exactly right for external reporting. So we broke out the liability versus the receivable, and then we reversed it so that the bookkeeping side can do what they do. And the accounting side does, does what they do. And we would explain possibly to the client anytime we hit the accounts receivable here and up top that we have a have a subledger customer account of ZZZ that we set up. So we're not messing up their subledgers, hopefully, but they might notice that ZZZ customer that we set up. We might want to let them know that. And then, of course, we had the breakout of the short term and long term portion of the loans, which once again is necessary for external reporting, but not great for internal tracking and normal payment processes of the loans. Therefore, we reverse it right after. So I'm going to save this. We could then export this if we if we so choose to give it to a client, possibly printing it 
to printing the entire worksheet. I'm gonna print it using the cute PDF printer. So it'll look something like this, as long as it fits one page wide. I don't care how many pages long is my personal uh, way of thinking about it. And then I'm gonna use the key, the PDF printer to put it here, there, there it is. I'm gonna put it into the reports, adjusting entries and save it. So if I open it up, then we have our reports that we can provide to a client and say, hey, look, these are the adjusting entries that we put in place. And, and notice we can format it however we wanna format it. I'm not saying this is the best, you know, format it whatever you wanna do, but you can give it some nice customized formatting and whatnot by exporting it to Excel in a similar fashion as we have seen with other uh, reports. So that's, uh, that's the general idea. That's the bottom line with regards to the reports. Once again, this is where we stand at this point in time in terms of uh, the trial balance. So you could check your numbers and then you can take a look at those uh, reports if there are any differences or discrepancies and to see if you can uh, drill down on those differences and possibly make changes uh, and, and figure out where any, any, uh, any of those differences might lie.